pinhead that's been taken with an electron microscope. It's still recognizable to you as a pin. And if we go in and look in more detail, you can see bacteria on the surface of the pin. You can also see the grooves in the pin where it's been ground. And let's go in still further. Well, here they begin to look like fish fingers. But we haven't yet got to the level of molecules. Now, with more sophisticated versions similar to this sort of device, nowadays we can take pictures like this, right the way down to the level of atoms. And here we have what looks like uh, a mountain canyon, sheer cliffs. Those cliffs are probably hundreds of atoms high. So if you were an atomic mountaineer, you could climb up and down them. But what's really wonderful is that now we can take movie images and zoom in. We can pretend that we've got atomic spectacles and we're going to go on an atomic plane ride and travel around and see this is a sheet of copper seen from above with atomic spectacles. Let's see what shows up on our plane ride. So we start gradually moving in, and we see these canyons flying beneath the plane. You can see marks on the surface. But for the moment, let's concentrate on those huge cliffs, just like the Grand Canyon. Now, away from the cliffs, what to our eye appeared to be smooth surface, we see here there are atoms on there and gradations. It looks somewhat like flying around above the clouds in a regular plane. And this thing coming up looks like the vortex of a tornado, but it's just where one or two atoms are missing, that sort of thing. So you're seeing here the surface of what to your eye appears to be smooth, but with atomic spectacles you see it's got incredible structure. Now the real power is that once you can see individual atoms like this, it gives you the possibility to move them around, put them in special places where you want to. And here some scientists at IBM in the States have gathered together some iron atoms and put them one by one in a circle. But what's really interesting in this picture is what's going on in the center of that circle. What we're looking at here is the surface of copper. Now, copper is a conductor. The electrons swim around freely. But once they're trapped inside this circle and can't get out, they form waves. Just like if you filled up a plastic uh, or a styrofoam cup with coffee, and dragged it across the floor, it would set up waves on the surface. They're called crispations, one of the words I've used in doing these lectures. This is the analog at the atomic level. You're seeing electron waves set up in this ring of iron atoms.